Let's try ZBrush on the new 2020 MacBook Pro M1. Now this is the 16 gigabyte version with one terabyte of storage. And the M1 processor has eight cores. It has four efficiency cores and four high performance cores. Sculpting and other brush functions are excellent on the M1. For this video, I'm working on an external 4K monitor. Performance is acceptable up to about 30 million polygons. Once you go above that, you're going to see delays and undo, and your frame rate's going to take a pretty big performance hit. Now, obviously, compared to my AMD 3970X Threadripper with 32 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM, the M1 really can't compare. Now, no one really expected the M1 to outperform a workstation processor, and still it's one of the most powerful and efficient CPUs available. If you compared it to an 8-core Intel or AMD, there's no contest. The M1 wins every time. It has faster cores, it runs cooler, and it uses less power. So the MacBook Pro M1 2020 edition is an excellent laptop, but could you imagine a 32-core version of the M1? That would be an amazing workstation. Now let's take a look at the clay buildup brush and see how well it performs at 6 million polygons and 27 million polygons. Here we are at 4K and 6 million polygons. The brush is very responsive, as is the undo. At 27 million polygons at 4K, Brush sculpting is very responsive, but we do see an increase in undo delay. And as you go up higher than 30 million polygons, this undo delay gets more severe. And that can be a little bit frustrating to work with. Now at 1080p, 6 million polygons is very fast. And undo, very fast. Here we are at 27 million polygons and working at 1080p. Sculpting is very responsive. But again, the undo has an increase in delay. Performance gets worse above 30 million polygons. Let's take a look at Sculptress performance at 4K resolution. As you know, it's a dynamic tessellation function, and it depends quite heavily on the single core performance of a CPU. And thanks to the M1 and its very fast single core performance, uh, Sculptress is no problem for it. The M1 handles it just fine. Here we see that performance is very consistent across different levels of tessellation. Every CPU will have a limit, of course, when it comes to sculptures, but even with small brush strokes, the M1 does very well. A good test of performance is the Move Brush, and you can see it's 7 million polygons. Performance is very good. This is on a 1920 by 1080 canvas, and here we see a 27 million polygon sphere and performance is degraded as expected, but it will still allow you to make those large adjustments later on in the modeling process. The MacBook Pro 2020 M1 has a NVMe storage system that is very fast. Saving new projects is very quick, and anytime you have to swap or handle data, it's going to perform very well. Now let's take a look at Z-Remesher. Thanks to the very fast single threaded performance on these chips, it really helps remesh the model quickly. As you can see, all the cores do not help here, but the M1 is fast enough to do the job. Let's decimate our model now. If you keep your eye on the activity monitor, you'll see that all cores do engage when pre-processing the model for decimation. This is a 5 million polygon object, so it will take some time to process but it's going to use a fairly large amount of RAM, so I recommend you buy the 16 gigabyte version of the MacBook Pro M1. And now that the pre-processing is complete, we will run the decimation process. As you can see, it's very fast. Let's go down another level. Once again, very fast. And finally, we'll go down one more level, and then we'll take a look at the nano mesh performance. Now we're working with a 4K canvas here, and we're going to use Insert Nano Mesh to insert geometry on every vertice of this model. And performance is quite good here. You can see that all eight cores are engaging to render that 4K canvas. Inserting the mesh is not really the problem here. It's rotating the model with all this extra geometry on it. This is where having more cores would allow 
more frames per second when rotating the model and it would feel more interactive while working. It wouldn't do much for the modeling tools, but it would do a lot for the rendering speed. Now here we're inserting another nano mesh, this time on a 1920 by 1080 canvas. And you can see the performance here is similar, so it's not necessarily just the resolution of the canvas that is impacting the performance here. It's also the amount of geometry, the fact that you're rendering so much. It seems to be a lot for the 8-core CPU. Now just imagine what it could do with more cores. Well, I guess that concludes my ZBrush performance review on the MacBook Pro M1 2020 edition. It's an excellent laptop. The CPU is exciting. I look forward to seeing what they do in the future. Anyway, so thank you for watching. I know it's been a while since the first video. Um, some of you are subscribed and you're probably surprised to even see this. I will be doing other videos and they will be up shortly. I have screen recordings of me sculpting in ZBrush, doing practice work or personal work. I may or may not do voiceovers on them. It depends if there's something interesting in there worth you know, having a conversation about. I also would like to make a video on the language of sculpting. So hopefully I'll get around to that soon. Uh, anyway, I will see you next time.